Outrocast. Donovan, Devin, a pleasure to be speaking with you both. And the first question we'll throw at Donovan and go, how are you? And does anyone get to call you Don or are you Donovan to everybody? I'm doing great. Uh, and people just call me whatever they want to call me. I've heard it all. So I don't really care. <laughs> I, call him, I call him Dono. <laughs> hey, it's great to have nicknames. It is an honor when people use the mental real estate to give you a new name. <laughs> he calls me, he calls me D-Dog. D-Dog. What up, D-Dog? Well, it's so dog funny because I've dog. called my son, I've called my son Orion. I've called Orion O-Dog his whole life. <laughs> it's just kind of funny that, that worked out that way. <laughs> totally. Now, what's not funny is the fact that you're changing history with this upcoming tour. But before I figure out and ask a bunch of things about this tour, who are you breaking the record of? Is it George Thorogood? Is it the Melvins? Do we know? We don't uh, really know exactly who it was, <laughs> nor do we care because we're going to break this record, and that's that's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah, we're certainly not here to give any props or press to anyone before because we are out to annihilate them. <laughs> Annihilation through art. Uh, that's, I'm sure, why most people make art. But the seed. No, of no, no, it's it's all it's all tongue in cheek. Right. It's all course. it's all like, you know, we just want to we just we just want to have fun and like. Claim this record, which is rightfully going to be ours, if 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 everything will maneuver the way we need it. To. <laughs> yeah, I do not envy the workload that's going to happen, but I'm sure once it's done, you'll go. That was fun. Maybe we can now do it in 48 days or something like that. But in the meantime, <laughs> uh, the see it all single and video is fantastic. I love the accompanying EP and all that. Now. Did the idea for the EP come as soon as you had the tour or are you just saying see it all so many times that you went, this is a song? Well, the tour got booked and then I went out and did the Almond Family Revival. And during that time, I was like, Devin, let's try to sit down and write a couple of songs and maybe we'll have enough to like make a record or an EP. And there was no pressure. If it came, it came and it did. And Luther Dickinson was on that tour as well. He ended up producing it and um I'm really glad we put the time in to, to, to make it happen because, you know, this tour, which is really unique about us, is Devin and I are joining both bands together. We're doing one show together. And I thought, God, it'd be so great if we wrote new songs and we're able to play those every night as well as stuff off of each of our catalogs. And that that all came together and happened. And I think that's an important part of this tour is that we're not just going out and just choosing songs that we've already played before. We have new stuff, which is which is going to be really fun. Yeah. Title track, sorry to cut you off there, Devin. The title track, See It All, to me is like a modern day, I've been everywhere. You know, the Johnny Cash staple, that was a cover. But in a good way, now, are all the lyrics, and I'll throw this at Devin, are all the lyrics factual, like you've never been to Burning Man? Yeah, I mean, there, you know, again, there's some tongue-in-cheek there, um, you know. Uh, I've never been to Burning like, Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ne never been to Burning Man, but I've been to Wichita. That's pretty you know, true for me. <laughs> yeah, that that is true for me. I've never been to Burning Man, and I have been to Wichita. So, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know, that's just an amalgam of of really kind of what you hear out there on the great highway of life. You know, you'll you'll overhear someone at a truck stop or at a at an airport. Oh, you know, I've never been to Grand Canyon, or I've never been. You know, this record, this tour, is a call to arms to inspire people to start checking off those bucket list places and to see this beautiful country. Uh, like the song says, you don't have to go too far to see it all. You can just take a different road, end up in a different county and see something that might blow your mind or, or make you look at life a little different that day. Um, that's what this record's about. The lyrics kind of all are this intravenous, like, you know, interstate that all lead to one place, which is inspiring to, to go. Got it. Uh, Donovan, with this tour, do you have ample time built in to do anything but sound check the gig and sleep? Like, for example, can you check off any bucket list things within the tour dates? I'll tell you, you know, what we are doing is we're bringing a film crew and we're going to film this. And um, every day, time willing, Devin and I are going to do something that is uniquely cool or something definitely out of the box in every state. We want to film this and we want to take people on this road trip and this journey and if we can introduce them to something that we got turned on to in, in, in that state whether it be a restaurant 
somebody's favorite vinyl record store. I take Devin surfing some some of these states that were by the beach. We just we want to go see it all as well. I don't want to just live on that bus and fucking wake up every day and go inside and play a show and get back on it. That's that's how you're gonna gonna go insane. But uh, we're gonna go out and do everything we can. I mean, some of these days we're not going to be able to because we do have 13, 14 hour drives. So we're yeah. going to go from one venue to the next venue, load and do it again. But there's going to be moments, you know, Alaska, uh, Hawaii, when we're up in Montauk, I think we're going to surf. Like we're going to go see as much as we can and try to do what we can in every state. And I think that's and, and what's going to be fun. We're going to film it. We're bringing a film crew and we're going to take people along for the journey. You said the magic word there is surfing. I'm dialing in from Long Beach, Long Island, New York, which is kind of a known surf town due to the scootins and hurling and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever surfed out here, Donovan? I have. I've surfed all over that zone. I don't know if you're by Rockaway. You by Rockaway? Is that where that is? I, uh, it's its own town, but it's a couple of miles from Rockaway. Yeah. It, it's, it's probably five miles from Rockaway and takes 45 minutes to get there the way traffic. Yeah, I surfed Rockaway all over New Jersey, up in Montauk, and uh, there's great waves in that area, man. It gets really, really good. Now, Devin, what was it that connected you and Donovan in the first place? Are you a surfer or was it a particular band? No, we were <clears throat> we were at uh, Americana Fest 2017, I want to say. And I had always heard about Donovan, you know, and but I, I, I didn't know much about him, you know, and we were kind of all there. It was a bit, it was a big jam that night. And Dwayne Betts and I showed up. And there was like some celebs in the house and shit. It was just kind of one of those like Americana Fest, like Nashville hangs. And I'm like, who's this motherfucker? You know, like this, who's this dude? And we start and we start playing some shit. And I don't know. I just really liked his vibe. And uh, and then we kind of, you know, we, we didn't we, we didn't really hang a whole bunch that night. But uh, I, I just kind of remembered him. And I remembered that we had some good kind of synergy. And uh, and then I reached out to him to do an Almond Family Revival tour a, a few years later. And that's where we really got to know each other and, and found out that, you know, there's we have a lot of similar um, aspects of our lives and, and, and similar, uh, you know, cats, you know, so it's just very, very simpatico. Um, when when I when I had this idea, I had this idea like 10 years ago and when, it, and when I turned 50, this idea kind of started to percolate again. And I'm like, well, that would be fun to do just with my solo band. Like, I'm going to go out. Like, that seems so lame. Like, you need to co-conspire with somebody. He's the first guy that came to mind. The only guy. I mean, it was like instantly. Like, Donovan's turning 52. Uh, Donovan's turning 50 also, I should say. <laughs> Not 52. Uh, 50 also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play on words. Um, So, like he was in before I could even finish describing the tour. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, okay, but like, wait, you should, you should hear the rest of it. No, I'm in. <laughs> and it was like, I love, it. I love that it's new, that it's exciting. And that it's like, you know, we're just, we're attempting to do it, you know, whether we do it or not, it's going to be a fucking great go. And we're going to, you know, try something new. I mean, we've been doing this for 25 years touring and it's like another summer tour, but I've never done one like this. I don't yeah, know and I think I think it's important when you when you get a little longer in the tooth, you know, we're at an interesting age at age 50 because we've earned our out here on tour. We're not 22, but we're not, you know, falling apart in 84 either. We're right in the middle. We're right at the peak of our powers. We know what yep. we know from what we've learned. You know, we've got the street smarts. We've got the, the touring histories. So at this point, you start looking for things that are clever some things that are different, different tone. Maybe you go out on an acoustic run or a storyteller's run or a collaborative run, or you point problems in its entirety. You, and, and these aren't gimmicks. They're just new ways to approach the tour so it doesn't get stale, you know? And this is a really a fun one. And this can become a model for future use. We can pick this model up whenever we want. Well, Devin, can I throw a compliment at you? Uh, some people don't like getting compliments. I'm a, I am a Leo. I am a Leo male. Shower me with your compliment. <laughs> okay. So I said this on a podcast when I was a guest. Oh. I said that Devin Allman cracked the code for tours with the Allman family revival. 
where when we were trying to get all the Van Halen tribute stuff to happen and people go, well, you know, Dave and Alex can't play a full show. I was going, no, Almond family revival style where Dave comes out for a couple songs. Alex comes out for a couple songs, special guests cover all this stuff. I think that you crack the code for every future classic rock band with the family revival tour. Thank you for saying that. I can't really take credit. I stole it from the last waltz. That's the best blueprint on earth. If you haven't ever seen the band, the last waltz, it's the finest music movie ever made. And that blueprint is the blueprint for the revival. And I appreciate you saying that. I hope that filmmaker of the last waltz one day makes another film that upstart marty but uh donovan you know he's <laughs> martin scorsese i don't know <laughs> no so, real work ethic. <laughs> donovan before as we've talked about before you became a successful musician you had the surfing background what replaced surfing as your number two or is surfing still your number two uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I picked up the guitar when I was 16. And at that same time is when I turned professional surfing. And the music and the surfing has never clashed. It's only just enhanced one another. You know, you play music at night and you surf during the day. And it's just been an insane marriage between the two because surfing's taken me to places that I've never thought I would ever go that I've been able to play music. Sure. And then the music's taken me to places that I would probably never would have gone because there was no waves uh, in my surfing world. So they've just both really have been amazing because as I was traveling with all my surfing adventures, I just brought the guitar with me and I just would learn from people all over the world. Like I'd see somebody playing and be like, oh, what are those chords? What are this? Teach me that. Teach me that. And so one thing led to another and I've never stopped doing either of them. I, I love them both so much. You know, music is a thing that you, for me, I really enjoy playing with people and sharing that with people and uh you know live concerts and then when you go and surf it's just a strange thing that you do and you're uh, it's very you're very isolated it's you by yourself on that board and on that wave and something incredible may happen and you're the only one that sees it and feels it but the cool thing is is those same feelings happen when you're on stage but you share it with a bunch of people so sure. i don't know it's like an it's like an addiction i i love both of them so much but before i ask my last question i'm just surprised you didn't say golf that golf became it because every blues guitarist, uh, punk guitarist, metal guitarist seems to be into golf as of say 45. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, I've played golf a couple of times, but I don't know. I, it's hard for me to, it's all right. It's hard for me to stay out there for 18 holes. It's like three, four hours. It's like, I kind of feel like I got other shit to do, but uh. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, I'm a fan of nine holes, you know? And like, or nine holes lunch and then nine more. Uh, John Ginty from from uh, the Almond Bets band got me into it, and I always kind of I don't know I kind of I never really saw the appeal until I went and did it. And the appeal for me was being out in nature and being disconnected from all the devices and the laptops and the and the phones. And it was really nice to be out there. And it's like you know what, nothing's going to interrupt this commune with nature and friends for a few hours. And I love that aspect. I don't get to do it nearly enough. Awesome to hear that. Well, Devin, the last question to you first, then Donovan, is after you wrap this successful 50-day tour and related filming and all that, how long are you gonna take off? I built in 75 days off, which is two and a half months. Um, so I'll come home and have 75 days before the next uh tour and anyone that follows me knows what that tour will probably be but uh hasn't been announced yet fingers crossed and donovan same question at you before i let you go how long are you taking off after the 50 days really no days off we do beach life uh ranch festival on the 22nd and then i play the following weekend on a saturday uh and then i'm going to brazil in october um and you know it just never stops i don't i don't look at this as like you know whatever it's going to be a, we're going to go out and attempt to do this thing and when and it what, does, what does petra say about this what does she say about this she thinks we're fucking crazy are you kidding me but she's going to be at the last gate with a bottle of champagne and if we pulled it off we're celebrating and i'm, oh, not, yeah, going, yeah. I'm not going out on full tours i'm telling you i'm doing a one-off the next weekend then i'm going home for probably a month then i go to 
Brazil. Then I'm off for like, you know, a month and I go to Mexico in December and then I do the end of the year run, but whatever. It's all, it's just a little work here and there, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I just, you know, one day at a time, man. Well, bringing it all together here, I'm looking forward to the footage that you film. I'm looking forward to both of your future tours. I'm looking forward to both your future recordings and thank you for the many years of great art, both of you. Thank you. Outro cast.